Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Monday, June the 20th, 2016. There is a lot on today's menu, so let's get started. First of all, Tropical Storm Danielle down here in the Bay of Campeche, just about to make landfall here in the next little while in eastern Mexico, not far from Tuxpan. I think that's how you say it. And uh, it'll be a big rainmaker, of course. Some gusty winds here and there, but that's about it. This is a visible satellite shot, a definite vigorous uh, center of circulation down here, a lot of deep convection associated with it, and uh, it certainly made the most out of its environment down here, the warm water of the Bay of Campeche and the limited upper level wind support. It, it took advantage of what it had, and there you go. We have our fourth named storm of 2016. Now, a lot has been made about that, that this is the earliest we have made it to four named storms. Well, we had Alex, Hurricane Alex, back in January. Uh, so that's not during the hurricane season, but right up until the beginning of the season through now, uh, we've had three. So that's pretty remarkable in and of itself. And what's interesting about this one is it formed from a tropical wave that moved across the Atlantic uh, from Africa, presumably came into the Caribbean, and developed in this area so it's not like it was an old front that draped across the region the energy was tropical wave energy in origin and so that's interesting maybe that means something and especially the fact that it's getting going uh, in an area where we really haven't had any development to speak of in the last few years because of very high wind shear tearing across this region uh, it has been very inhospitable well that seems to be changing so there you have it. So it'll be making a landfall in the next little while here, and it'll die out pretty quickly over Mexico. So we're getting ready to get into the uh, last third of June here. So let's look at the points of origin. One little dot way out here in the far eastern Atlantic. There's another one uh, to the west of that. I can almost draw a face in there. Let me get rid of that. Don't want to be too comical, right? Got to take this seriously. So a couple of areas out here way in the deep tropics, a few sort of subtropical developments scattered around in the Caribbean and the Gulf, of course, and then a nice cluster here in the eastern Pacific where we haven't had the first named storm yet. Pretty remarkable. Atlantic is four, the Pacific is zero. We have not even had a typhoon in the western Pacific. So maybe all the energy is going to be in the Atlantic this year. Not all of it. That would be very bad, but you get the idea. Uh, so the next 10 days, things start to perk up a little bit more over history. This, again, is the origins map uh, over the last 100 years plus of where things have developed before. And these dots will continue to fill in as we move through the season. So this is the sea surface temperature anomaly chart for today. And you can clearly see the cold ribbon here in the tropical Pacific. You can also see the very warm water relative to average in the main development region through the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico. Kind of a coolish subtropical Atlantic and uh, still kind of warm here just off the Iberian Peninsula. What we don't see is any of this blue coming down the uh, west side of, well, following the Canary Current and then moving west out into the MDR. Uh, people have speculated that that's going to happen, and here we are 20 days into the season, and it just keeps getting warmer and warmer in the main development region. And uh, so there you go. Now I want to show you something really remarkable. You want to see how things can flip from year to year. You think about a geologic time scale, millions of years, and how slow things have to happen uh, on our planet, seemingly. Well, check this out. The same map one year ago. I mean, that's remarkable. Very cold in the main development region, quite warm up in the subtropics, so opposite of what you'd expect for any Atlantic hurricane development to speak of. And then this ridiculous El Nino that came on last year was well underway in the tropical Pacific. So this is where we are now. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty remarkable. We're also cooling it off here near the Baja and... You know, the subtropics up here north of Hawaii where nothing really happens anyway. But basically, the Pacific seems to be cooling off as a whole, while the Atlantic seems to be warming, at least in the tropics. So, interesting to say, to say the least there. The upper ocean heat content, also very telling 
Uh, lots of energy here this year in the western part of the Atlantic Basin, and this is what it looked like last year. Yeah, here we are today, one year ago. So there is definitely a lot more upper ocean heat content moving its way up uh, along through the Bahamas here off of Florida, even a little bit of it here right off the Carolinas, and it's right here at the bottom of the scale, but again, it's not zero. And so, yes, many areas are going to be plenty warm for hurricanes to develop, I understand that, but when you have additional ocean heat content below the surface, where that 80 degree line, let me look at it a different way. The Gulf of Mexico, the Western Atlantic here, the Caribbean, are almost always going to be warm enough to support intense hurricanes once we get to August and September. But sometimes this, these additional pockets of upper ocean heat content here, here, little one here in the Straits of Florida, and then the Caribbean, of course, adds a little bit more energy. And even these areas here on the lower end of the scale, that is additional energy in the ocean that's beyond just the threshold of 80 degrees Fahrenheit, roughly, that we're used to seeing. So when I see this starting to creep up uh, along the southeast coast and filling in in the Gulf of Mexico, for example, you know, you got to take notice, especially that we are in the hurricane season. So uh, compared to last year, yeah, things are moving along uh, a little bit more rapidly uh, than they were. So we'll have to keep an eye on that, too, as things progress. So interesting that I mentioned that, things progressing, because... We're going to have to be watching this that's uh, potentially going to progress. Why is this doing that to me? Over the next uh, couple of weeks, trying to zoom in on it. So what do we have here? Well, this is the west coast of Africa, all right? This is eastern North America. There's Florida, for example, and there's South America. And there's the west coast of the United States, baking hot out in the desert southwest. So you got everything there, and then look at this. All outlined in this brown here generally sinking motion in the atmosphere just a little bit of a favorable area over here where Danielle formed but then over the Indian Ocean and the maritime continent region look at all this green sitting over here and all of this convective activity well this is upward motion in the atmosphere or a favorable MJO pattern um, and that is likely going to be moving its way from west to east, it goes around the globe, and so this is a Mercator projection map. Eventually, this will be moving across the Pacific, probably uh, eventually form the first storm out here, and then it'll move into the Atlantic before too long, uh, roughly the end of the month into the first part of July. Now, that's interesting because if we look at the water vapor here, the precipitable water, look at this right here. This is a tropical wave in the atmosphere. It comes off of Africa. It's what we call an African easterly wave. There's another one here. And it's got a lot of energy with it. There's no convective activity associated with it so far. Because, yeah, you see all this. There's no moisture there. It's very dry over the tropical Atlantic right now with the Saharan air intrusions coming off. But you do have this high amplitude tropical wave that's sitting out around 25, 26 degrees longitude here. And this is going to continue to move across day after day after day until eventually it makes its way over to the Caribbean Sea where the moisture content is high as these surges push through. We don't have this sinking motion going on over here constantly like we do apparently right now over the tropical Atlantic. So while things are hostile out here for right now, these pieces of energy, as they come off, they end up somewhere. And this is the energy that spawned Danielle. You can clearly see that right there, that tropical wave moved through. So we're going to have to watch this one right here because some of the models, the GFS in particular, are trying to develop this into something it looks like at about the day 8, 9, 10 time frame. And I'm just going to show you what that looks like. This is just an example. And at least here I can present it in the proper context rather than saying, you know, oh, look out, something's developing, and we all need to head for the hills. So you look at that tropical wave energy, and this is what it looks like uh, out, if I can get the thing to cooperate. That ends up in the Caribbean Sea uh, at about the day 10 time frame. 
Come on. And this is what it looks like at the surface. I thought I'd show you this. So I'm going to just show you the day 10 snapshot. All right. So let's click on 240 there. And uh, lo and behold, well, try again. Come on. There we go. Pop up. Thank you. There it is. Uh, tropical cyclone develops in the model field. Uh, the energy comes in and it blossoms right here in the Northwest Caribbean Sea. I show you this, it's 10 days out. And you know, normally um, you don't do that, especially without context. And in this context, I think you can start to put a couple of things together that uh, this MJO pulse coming eastward, eventually making its way to the Western Hemisphere, could provide a very nice atmosphere for these things to develop and we do have a tropical wave sitting out in the eastern Atlantic now that's going to end up here at around the same time. So you see, you try to put all these things together and pick a pattern that might be conducive for development. So we're going to have to watch that, and that's certainly what I will be doing, because that's going to be coming into the first part of July, and of course we have the 4th of July national holiday at that point, so we definitely need to keep our eyes open, and the fact that that's where everything has developed so far this year for the most part. And um, it just seems like the season wants to just take off on us. So maybe we need to pay closer attention. All right. There you go. We covered a lot today, as promised. I appreciate you tuning in, as always. I am Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Uh, thanks again for watching. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.